everybody. This is the Growing Pains Podcast. We're back. As you know, my name is Jordan. I'm here with Big Z. And today we got a special guest, Joe Perry, a.k.a. Lil Snuff. What's going on? What's up, fellas? Thanks for What's having going me. On, oh, man. Thanks for coming on. We've been talking about it for a couple weeks, so, you know, I've been excited. Yeah, absolutely. We've been going through the questions, and, and it's big. So basically, we're going to talk about, look, your life. Obviously, you have oh, your right. podcast that's blowing up yes thank you i appreciate uh, that but we'll just start it off uh start it off small kind of you know where you grew up okay what your childhood was like i don't know how old you are so it's gonna be great so i grew up the italian market 10th and carpenter that's where my family's from okay i hung out on 16th and jackson 31 years old I went to st monica's okay uh-huh. so childhood all st monica's you know parents are working class first job was at dad's stuffings i was like 10, 11 years old because I wanted to buy true religion jeans. <laughs> but, I know what that um, like, Now they sound on my Marshalls. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the truth. Then uh, I have a little sister. You know, my parents are still together. I'm married. You know, I'm married for three years down to my wife, Danielle. Shout out to her. Love awesome. her to death. I went to New McGrady for high school. Okay. And, uh, you know, I always hung out at 16th and Jackson, 18th and Johnson, 10th and Carpenter. And I always hung out, you know, with an older crowd. I guess that kind of leads into the podcast later in life so yeah. Yeah. you know so that's really where i grew up at i mean i really wasn't too good in school i was always a street kid you know always south philly always though south philly. South philly, huh? that's it south yeah. philly forever i get insulted when people talk bad about south philly yeah like people Dude, say i love like, it yeah i love south yeah. philly Listen. i just started coming around because obviously joey that i work with like yeah. he brought me around and the thing is like it's really like a sense of community like i met people one, two times, yeah. I come back around, everybody knows me. Oh, yeah. yeah. They know my name, exactly. they remember me. Like, yeah. You don't so, see that. It's no. a very tight community. I mean, really, our South Philly's, I don't know, like, say 10 to 20 blocks that everybody just knows each other, everybody hangs out. I mean, you could go anywhere and everybody's going to know you. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's just, but everybody makes you feel welcome. Don't For matter sure. where you're at, what store you go into. That's why I, like, take offense to it when somebody from Jersey's like, oh, you live in South Philly? Yeah, I live in South Philly. Why? Yeah. I live in Jersey now. I grew up in Reading. Okay. But I live in South Jersey now. I wish I was in South Philly. Yeah. Some yeah. people do, some people don't. It's whatever you like. Yeah. Me personally, I love South Philly till the day I die. The, the right. sense of community is awesome. Yeah. Uh, you said you're married how long? Three years. That's awesome. Congratulations. Yeah. Congrats. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Appreciate it. One thing I did see, like I watched obviously some interviews and stuff yeah. like that. Like you always talk so highly about your wife. Oh, I love her to Which death. is which is awesome. Like, what do you think having like a strong woman by your side does for you? So I always said this, you know. When I was younger, you know, I was I was crazy. Yeah, she yeah. knows I was crazy. Everybody knows I was crazy. You know, that's just what I did. I was I just always liked going out, having a good time. I was never interested in going out to fight. Right. I was looking to go out and get girls. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's just what yeah. it was. That's how yeah. I grew up with me, my friend Russo, like Reverso, TJ Bionda. Like we were always going out, having fun, never looked for a fight. Yeah. Russo sometimes did. Yeah. Yeah. I got a couple I, friends like that. I mean, but everybody's our yeah, friend. Yeah, like you that. know, but we always girls. And then, you know, my goal was eventually, of course, to find a girl who I fell in love with, marry, and, you know, start a family with. But I had no intentions on meeting my wife. The hell I met my wife was a car ride. Never seen her a day in my life. Never wow. looked at I didn't know who she was. Yeah. I went to a place called Tradesman's with Reverso and Russo. Okay. And we were walking out the door, and another girl who we're friends with, Elisa, her name is, came up to me, tapped me on the shoulder. She's like, you drive us to South Philly, me and my girlfriend, Danielle. Sure. Got in the car, and that was it. That was your that, girlfriend from that from on. That <laughs> day on. When she got out of the car, this is yeah. a true story. When she got out of the car, I looked over at Reverso and I was like, yo, I'm going to marry her. And he was like, you got zero shot. I was like, we yeah, always used to right. fuck around. You know what I mean? Like, kid around. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Girls, son. Like, and then that was it. Talked from that day on. Took me like six months to go out with her. She would not go out with me for anything. Yeah. You yeah, would not do it. Wow. Right? That's like, that's she everything. would not you know, you gotta, do it. You got to keep trying. Meanwhile, <laughs> everywhere she went, I picked up her check at the Villa de Roma. Picked up her check at like <laughs> any restaurant she went to that I seen on Instagram, I would call up and pick up the check. Wow. Until oh, wow. she said yes, she would go out with me. That's what I did. And then you made her pay when you went out. And then, we, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And no, then, that's... yeah, we were together for like two years. We got engaged. Then we got married. That's awesome. Yeah, that's so that's awesome. awesome. Yeah. You have to have... A support system, especially, I believe, a good woman at home. Because if you got her yeah. support, everything else is easy. Right. If she's riding with you 100%, yep. if I call my wife right now and said, have that car outside right now, we're out of here, we got to go. She's there in 11 seconds. Yeah, we yeah. talk about that a lot. Like, I yeah. have a, a wife, I'm going on two years married now. Yeah. Um, he has a girlfriend. I have a girlfriend. I've been dating for about three years now. Yeah. Wow, three years. Yeah. But it's like... Yeah. Yeah. Same thing. Like she's at home with my son, but if I told her come here yeah, right yeah. now, she's packing him up like and she's that. coming to yeah, get yeah. me. And like 
obviously I'm out late. She's home with my son. Of and, course. And she understands, like, we're, we're trying to do something with life. Yeah. So I definitely, I, I agree with Listen, everything you said. I'm going back and forth to Florida. Yeah. You know, I'm always, yeah, I'm lot. always hanging at, you know, our clubhouse. If it's not with the Jesters or it's just our, our social club that we're breaking balls, going to the casino, gambling, never says a word. Yeah. Never says a, a word. Good girl. Meanwhile, she's living with my father right now, so I have no idea how she can handle that right now. But that's another story. But, like, you just always have to have that support system at home. And before I met Danielle, before we went on the first date, I told her my situation. Yeah. This is who I am. I'm clean and sober. At that time, it was, like, three years. Mm-hmm. She was fine with that. Took yeah. me six months going on a date with her, and we ran with it ever since. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah that's it, crazy. It was good. So you yeah. hit a lot there. You did bring up the jesters. Yes. Uh, we were lucky enough yes. to join yeah. you guys this year, which was awesome yeah. in the parade. Um, how long have you been doing that? So I was in the jesters from the first year that it happened. I took three years off. Two was because I was in rehab. Okay. So I okay. did not go out on the parade. Yeah. Couple, the other year, you know, my old heads, who I love to death, told me, listen, you can't come out this year. You're out of control. Oh, man. And it, they uh, were right. Yeah. Like, yeah. I was out. I was to the point where it was so unbearable. I didn't even want to be around myself. Like, listen, open coat, Steve. Yeah. I remember one New Year's. I mean, I tortured him from Broad and Shunk to, like, Broad and Washington. There's no beer. There's no this. There's no that. To the point where, I'll never forget, he was wearing a firefighter hat. Uh-huh. We were firefighters that year. Yeah. He comes up to me smashes me in the chest with a 24 pack and was just like get away from me like he had enough yeah like it was to the point where like it was that like they didn't even want me there right. i don't blame them yeah. i don't want myself there but i did do it every single year and since i've been back i mean clean him so we're going on eight years I've been back ever since. So yeah, I didn't that's miss a year awesome. since I got yeah. sobriety. We should be in it every yeah, year. Yeah, I was just yeah. this year. I don't plan on missing a it's year. It's the best. Yeah. It really it is. is. It's, it's a, a lot blast. of fun. Listen, and when the Jesters first came around, we had, I don't know, 250, 300 people. Yeah. And then as you get older, people branch off and do their own thing. Yeah. yeah. But last year was this year that just passed. So probably one of my favorite years. It really was. It was everybody, great. Uh, there was like 200 people there. Everybody was there. Everybody was having a good time. Uh, Families, yeah. Yeah. wives, yeah. girlfriends. And this year coming up, I think the Jesters are probably going to be probably the biggest club going on Broad Street. We got yeah, so many people win. reaching out. Uh, she'll so. win this year. Well, we're going to perform this year. Yeah. We got a couple of meetings that are coming up. We're going to have a skit. You was wearing around for like Jester Jungle Drive. What I mean nah. to tell you, we turned the corner of City Hall. I might look, I get the chills. Never seen nothing <laughs> like it. Yeah. Never seen nothing. We like, gotta do that this it year. Was I'm excited. Insane. It yeah. was insane. And I have a son too, so like I'm excited just because like the tradition too. Like yeah, he went. About he didn't go down this year. He's only he's turning one in yeah. April, so she didn't bring him out. But like, as he grows up, I get to bring him around. You gotta that. get him like, involved. That that's, yeah. that's awesome. Um, but you talked a, a lot of, in there about you know you've been sober for eight years. Eight years. Um, yeah. So so how did that come about with your addiction? My brother, um, he went to rehab like five times. Yeah, he's been sober now for five years. God I'm, bless him. Five or six years. I'm okay. maybe going on six. Um, but what led you to like all so, that in your life? I was. Like I said, I was always not crazy. I always wanted to have fun. Mm-hmm. I actually had a Percocet before I had a drink. I, wow. I went straight to pills. Really? I never smoked pot till this day. Yeah. Never once in my life. What do you think got you to that? To like the Percocets? I just think that I, I seen, I probably just seen people have fun doing it. Okay. And they were normal. Right. Yeah. And then the first time I ever was going to do a Percocet, I was down the shore in Memories of Margate. Somebody said, you know, you, you, yeah, they were yeah, reopening this place, year, I think, right? I, I believe. <laughs> I don't know. They might have sold it, opened it, whatever. Oh, they reopened. Listen, shout out to Jerry Blavitt. Yeah. It was a great time. I went there once. It was amazing. It's it's unbelievable. But I remember the first time I was going to do a perk, I put it in my hand. And when everybody turned around and they did theirs, I threw mine in the trash can. Like 10 minutes later goes by, I look at one of my friends and his he's, his eyes are glow when he's having a ball. Yeah. Some reason I went back to that trash can and it was laying right there. Now in wow. a nightclub, that's incredible. Bottles are getting yeah, thrown. Right. Every- that's wild. Yeah. The pill was right there. I took it out and the rest was history. Wow. I went from doing one. That was a five milligram. The first one I ever did. By the end of that weekend, I was doing ten milligrams. <laughs> By two yeah. months later, I was doing fifteens, and then it was I was doing thirties, and it lasted, Jeez. you know, eight years. Four rehabs later. Wow. A ton of debt. Owed everybody money. Everybody hated me. It happened so fast yeah. too. Like with yeah. my brother, like. My brother was always a drinker. You know, yeah. he, he never smoked weed. Um, he has Crohn's disease. I have Crohn's disease okay. as well. So I think he got prescribed it. And, and then it. it was, 
And like I believe people have like an addictive personality. Yeah. Like like you said, like there was a lot of people that could do it and be regular yeah. and, and have yeah. fun. I have an addictive personality with everything. If it's not for girls, sure. yeah. tattoos, yep. hats, yep. money, game, whatever, whatever it is, I have an addictive personality. Yep. That's why I don't think I would ever so, uh, take pills or anything like that. Because yeah. I know like we talk a lot That's about why like, I I never have. I've only ever smoked God. weed because I like it. Yeah. yeah. You, know? and, you gotta know yourself too. Yeah, like absolutely. Like obviously you know yourself now, like you, you can't go back and do that. No, I tried every way possible. Possible. Like, all right, I'll just drink, but I won't get high, or I'll just get high and I won't drink, or yeah. I'll just do coke on the week. And right. no, none of it ever. It all leads to it. Yeah. No. Like, I have friends that like do coke and all that no. stuff, and it's like they drink and then they do coke. Yeah, or it's like they do coke and then they drink. But, like, no, but some people could do it normally. Yeah. yeah, whether it's smoking pot or doing anything else, drinking. I just am not that person. Right. Yeah, and I, you know, it runs I in my family a little bit. You know, my father, my mother, no, my cousins, no. Um. Back in the day, my dad's cousins, you know, they had an addiction personality. They struggled. I, I did lose a cousin to heroin. But I, I I just, once I did it, I couldn't stop. I loved it. I fell in love with drugs fast. Yeah. And, and I couldn't stop. You went know. to rehab, you said, four times? Four times. And was it like back to back to back or you came out, you I had a I usually stint, would or? go after the parade. January 2nd really? was my day. Like my <laughs> friends would make a joke and be like, if we text Snuff January 2nd and his phone's green, he's in rehab. Wow. So it was like that. But... I went to four. The first time I went to rehab, you know, all the older guys, wags, coat. I got dropped off to Joey in Florida. Wow. Like they, they set it all up Florida's for me. a big place for rehab. Yeah, my brother went down there. Yeah, right, 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 I, I, my dad and mom didn't want to, like, admit it, like, that I had a problem. So yeah. my cousin actually told them. And, you know, of course, they, they, they were broken. Like, they couldn't believe right. it. They didn't know what was going on. So I had like this master plan, like, all right, everybody knows now I'm high. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell everybody I'm going to rehab, but I need to get one last hurrah in me. Yeah. So I went to like Wags, Coat, like, let me get two, 300. Anybody like that would give me money. I said yeah. we were going to a union meeting because we were at a union meeting. Right. Everybody, 200, this guy, before you know it, like 1,500, got high that day. I was on a plane the next day. Wow. Gone. Yeah. That was the first time in 2014. It didn't work. 2014, I went back 15, twice. It didn't work. Then the beginning of 16, I went back, and I I stayed sober ever since. Okay. So and four I, runs. I see you post Tribe a lot. Yes. Are you, like, involved with them? Did you go? Is that, like, a rehab? So Tribe is a facility that takes outpatient, you know, okay. patients after they get out of treatment and they need a place to go for meetings, like three meetings a week. They have housing and stuff like that. That's so awesome. I'm helping them out with, like, marketing right. and business development. Okay. So, okay. That's awesome. awesome. But I went to – my last rehab I went to was Malvern. Malvern, PA. Okay. And it was unbelievable. That's that's what made it work? No. What made it work was the facility was great, but I was in there for 18 days. Mm -hmm. And the counselor calls me down to the office. She's like, we have to tell you something. I said, what's, you know, what's going on? She's like, um, your father's not going to make it. And I'm like, what do you mean? And they're like, took a massive heart attack. This was his second heart attack at the time. Wow. And I was like stunned. Like, what yeah. do you mean? They're like, he, you know, I'm like, well, give me the phone. I have to call my mother, my sister. And they're like, no, we don't want you to. And I was like, because in rehab, they don't want you like to have contact yeah. with you. Yeah, they normally like, don't yeah, give yeah, you like yeah. big news like that either. So I was like, listen, I understand what you're saying, but I need to talk to somebody. So I only remembered one phone number in my phone. I didn't even know my mom and dad's number because, you know, the iPhones. But I yeah. remembered my one of my best friends growing up, Ray Dotty. Mm -hmm. I called his house. And he was mad at me at the time, but I kept calling, no answer. And I left a voicemail. I'm like, Ray, listen, my dad took a heart attack. Don't know if he's going to make it. I'm at Malvern. I need you to get in your car. It's like an hour and a half away and pick me up. And then like two hours later, they came and got me. He was like, listen, your friend's out here to get you. Yeah. Like, yeah. Are, you're leaving. Your dad's in bad shape. So by the time I got to the hospital, he like they said he was pronounced dead for like a minute. Wow. So when I got there, he had wires all over him. He was in bad shape. And uh, my grandpa Bay was there, you know, God rest his soul. He passed away, my grandfather. But he he looked at me and he was crying. He was like, you got to stop. Before I even see my dad, yeah. I went in. My dad's eyes were closed. He was all on machines. And mm -hmm. I just said, I'll never do this again. And, and that was it. it. He's, my dad survived. Cra That's awesome. Crazy. He's That's crazy awesome. as can be. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he's nuts. But, I, you know, I love him to death, yeah. of course. Right. He survived. And I never, I said, I'll never pick up another drink or drug again. And that's when that was when it all changed. Yeah, I work, that's, I work that's with awesome, a guy. Honestly. I talk I talk to him a lot, and I mean, he was. I mean, he told me he got arrested like twenty seven yeah. times. He was in Camden, and same thing. Like his mom got well, yeah. a little different, but his mom got diagnosed with cancer. Something, and he was scared. Yeah. Like he's like, I'm not gonna be in jail yeah. 
or in rehab, you know, and, and lose yeah, a Yeah, it's the truth. Like, luckily, I never got in trouble. Yeah. Never got arrested. You know, I never robbed anybody. I don't have any of them crazy stories like that. Right. My thing was go out, have fun, do drugs, and then it became not a weekend war no more. It just became every single every day. day. Yeah. Right. Couldn't get out of bed without snoring 3.30s. Well, I would be definitely sick. Yeah. So that's, that's crazy. Yeah, eight that years. It. Congratulations yeah. again. Yeah, congrats, Thank you. I appreciate that's, that. That's big. That's big. That's like, and I, my wife even said, like, that's the only day to me that's important. Yep. September 11th, 2016 was the day I got sober. That's really it's a crazy yeah. day, but like my birthday, how, like if I'm not sober, I have zero, yeah. none of this stuff that I'm doing now would ever be possible. Yeah. I right. want to have a wife. I want to have, you know, friends. I want to have family. I want to have a job. I want to have yeah. any of it. Yeah. You're, it, yeah. you're doing a lot of big things. Like yeah, one, one of the things I see too a lot is like the commercials. Yes. Like yes. I know you did a lot of commercials in the past. I've yeah. seen you on TV. Yeah. Uh, what got you into like the TVs? And they so, don't sell them for more. They sell them for, for less. less. Yeah. And listen, and no matter where I go, it's always for less. That's but it. What got me into it was, oh, let me fix this chair. Was it? Uh, I got in the car business, you know, 2014, 15, and I was selling cars. Time, I'm still a salesman, and. You know, I was working with all older guys. They had their customers already. They had the customer base. And social media was just getting like that right. big yeah. like rush. Everybody and I'm like, you know it. what? I got to do something like different. Yeah. Let me just post goofy car commercials on TV. Like on Instagram. Yeah. 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 Snapchat, Vine was out, whatever. I post a commercial of me ghost riding a bike during Christmas time in the dealership. goes viral. It's like one, one million views. Wow. When views were like crazy to get. Yeah. Right? It was big. Yeah. And, like, people were starting to talk about it, like, everywhere I went. And I'm like, you know what? I got something with this. And I just ran with the commercials yep. for a while as a salesman. Yep. Then I wind up eventually becoming a manager and a boss. But during that time, a girl contacted me from Q102, Rachel on the radio. Okay. A great friend of mine now, still till this day, still sell her cars. Great. And she awesome. was like, listen – you got to really capitalize on this. You got something here, and I ran with it. Yeah. And that was it. And now, I mean, I see, like, the energy from the commercials yeah. Yeah. now go into, like, when you're promoting, like, yeah. the things with Tribe and things like that. Like, yeah. the energy is always well, – have you always been, like, that energy um, guy? Like I think I – no, I was more I was more negative when I was getting high. Like, okay. Yeah. Like, then I, I never had energy. I never, I never was in the mood to do nothing. I always wanted to sleep or, you know, just not be around people. Yeah. Right. The energy came, I guess, the last eight years, you know, got sober, and I really got into – you know, where I was comfortable at with myself. Like, right. even on the podcast, if you see, like, I'm always promoting the merchandise, you know, Joey Merlino or yeah. Patreon or YouTube. Like, you have to keep saying it because people want to hear it, you yeah. know? Right. Right. We, got a, we got a bunch of questions about, you know, the podcast and sure. things like that. But before we get into that, I did, like I said, I watched, you know, one of your interviews. And yeah. I seen something you said. You were working 70 hours a week yeah. and still flying down to Florida to shoot the podcast. Yeah. Like, what? I mean, I'm assuming it's probably going to go back to eight years ago, but maybe before that. Like, when did you develop that work ethic? Because that's well, right. listen, a lot of we talk about it a lot. Yeah. Like kids nowadays, especially our generation, yeah. they don't want to work hard. I always had a job, but I wouldn't say I always had like work ethic. Like yeah. I was in the union and union breaks. Yeah, like I was in the state chain union and. What I mean to tell you, I never did anything. I literally walked in a circle. Like, yeah. I never I never did. But when I got into the car business, of course, I got sober. I needed a routine. Okay. So the routine helped me get sober. Like, and I always say, this, the, the car business for me was the best thing and the worst thing that could ever happen to me. The best thing meaning I got a routine to stay sober, and I really believe that. The worst thing was when you're in the car business, it's like jail. Yeah. You can't do anything. It's a lot of hours. Yeah, it's still. a lot of hours. It's a lot of hours. I did work bell to bell. You know, from 8 in the morning till 9 at night mm -hmm. when the podcast first started in the interview, I said 70 hours a week. Like, yeah. I would get on the plane at 8 in the morning. We would film me and Joey. I'd be back on a plane by like 6.30, 7. My wife would pick me up from the airport. I'm in bed by 9. Wake up the next morning, right, back in the car right. business. Wow. I never took one day off for the podcast from the dealership when I was there. Yeah. Never took a vacation day. Never took a sick day in like five years. I never took a sick day. Okay. Yeah. But now you're you're all in on the podcast now. All in. 100% all in. in. There, and I was all in when the podcast started. Yeah. It's just a matter of I had a career of a job that I thought I loved. Yeah. Right. But when the podcast came down, I really could have seen what I was doing on there and my, you know, me and Joey together, like the energy. Yeah. It was just something that was unmatched. And I was like, you know what? I'm more happier doing the podcast than I am with the car business. Wow. Like, right. it was just too much. I couldn't do really juggle both. Because, listen. That's the, tough. The podcast got humongous. Like yeah. I knew it was going to be big. Yeah. I just didn't know it was going to be that big that fast. It right. was quick. So it was very yeah, hard was. to manage. And you got, you know, it's me, 
Joey, just say Coat and Wags, where there's only like four to like five people really doing everything. Yeah. You know, right. I'm doing the social media, they're booking gigs, or Joey's talking to every single person on Instagram, so we all know our role. Yeah. And I'm just like, you know what? I can't do both. I'm just going to do one, and it was the podcast. Yeah. Now the podcast, is, the podcast is going big. That was one. a better option. Yeah, yeah. it was a better <laughs> option. Yeah, it was. I mean, you probably... I mean, from the looks of it, like seeing you on the podcast. Now, obviously, I seen you on the commercials. It looked like you love that shit. But yeah, I love. It. I love. It seems like you love the podcast yeah. too. Like the yeah, podcast is is it's incredible. Fun. It's fun because we're doing something that nobody's ever done before. Yeah. You know, we're, yeah. we're we're doing different things. We're going to different places. You know, and if you were around Joey as much as like I'm around him now, like he just makes everything fun. Yeah. You know, like every, see that. you know, like yeah. everything's yeah, breaking yeah. balls. We we have fun with doing it. We I love talking sports. I love you know we do love gambling. Even yeah. though I'm in recovery, I love gambling. Yeah. I do, <laughs> you know, and it's just, and I and I'm honest about it. That's yeah. what I enjoy. You yeah. know what I mean? Like I don't drink. I don't do drugs. I don't go out late at night. I'll never cheat on my wife. Do I like parlays? Yeah, <laughs> I do. I'm not gonna lie about it. I wanted that's, to ask you about the gambling truth. too. Like I mean, I see yeah. you went what four for four. I know I went eight and oh, eight and like. Seven and one in the last two weeks. Yeah. Last week I went four and up. Yeah, I seen yeah. that. You smoked it. But um, with with the gambling, now do you play everything? Are you just big sports betting yeah, guy? Sports so or... I would say we got smoked this we past played weekend. Played yeah. Well, and, you can't play. And... Listen, as many parlays <laughs> as I hit in my life, it goes right into the slot machines. But yeah, I, okay. I, I don't play slots like that no more. Okay. But slot machines are the devil. Yeah. But yeah, I would say. Are. The best thing I like doing is a player parlay. Okay. okay. I do. They're, they're, okay. they're the most enjoyable. Yeah, we got caught trying to chase the jackpot this yeah. weekend. Yeah, and it happens. Fucking smoke it. Even yeah. girls like player parlays now. Yeah. Like my sister, my wife, my mother, like girls. It makes sports more fun, yeah, I does. think, too. It Even the older does. generation, they, you know, like older guys never heard of a player parlay. No, no they right. love them. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? So everybody enjoys it. But like right. blackjack, poker, I'm not a blackjack like guy. I don't like playing cards. No. I'll shoot dice if I, if I could. Okay. You know, you need a nice bankroll with dice. Yeah. But if I had to pick one game in the casino that I would play is slots and you got to stay away from it. Yes. Because yeah. yes, you can't you win. You, you can't, can't win. win. I see all these people on Facebook. <laughs> I see all these people on Facebook like, they're doing high limit slots. They're winning all this money. Well, listen, I'm like, you we can, can go and do it, I and hit, then we get smoked. I hit two time. jackpots. I really? hit a sixty thousand dollar jackpot Damn, before. Really? Yeah, and then I hit a thirty four thousand dollar jackpot. Wheel of Fortune Hawaii Where? on the phone. Oh, in Hawaii? No, on the phone. Oh. Fanduel. My wow. buddy Pissarro told me about the game. I started playing it, and I smoked them right before. How much you put in? I put in that time five hundred bucks. The second time I deposited. 500, but I had like a deposit match, so they gave me a yeah. thousand. And I started ripping 50 hours of spin, and I wound up in it. So I've been telling you. <laughs> I've been telling you. <laughs> no, but don't, don't spin. listen to it. Don't listen to it. It was the worst thing that could ever happen to me. I'm not kidding. You probably yeah. put the 60 the grand back in. Triple, double, quadruple. Yeah. Oh, it, it's insane. the worst yeah. thing that yeah. could yeah, ever happen. Hard, it's like doing a drug. When you first sniff that pill, take that shot, yeah. that feeling you feel, uh-huh. hit a jackpot on a slot machine, you're chasing it for the rest of your life. Yeah. I'm, I'm serious. Can, I'm chasing my it. first one still. There you I'm go. Still, yeah, I didn't even hit one. Yeah. 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 It's not good. It, no, it, it's really not. I put myself on the band list in PA. Because I ban myself more times than anybody. Yeah, I'm trying to get, I'm yeah. trying to get off right now. Yeah, well, you got to get a lawyer. Thing, you got to get a lawyer. Yeah? I yeah. told him I was drunk. They don't care. No, you're yeah, state they don't want to hear that. Listen, did you ever hear on the show when I say gamble responsibly? I mean it. My right. thing is, I never lost, like, listen, I, I went one night by myself. I was, like, chasing the win. Yeah. I think I lost, like, I don't know, 1,200 bucks. It wasn't nothing. No. Ridiculous. But still, but it's I was funny. drinking. They're yeah. feeding me the whole time. Yeah, of course. I got home. I'm pissed. I'm like, man, yeah. screw this. That's I put not... myself on a list, and now I'm, listen, it's, now I can't go. It's, it, gambling is just like anything else. You got to do it. Like, we were talking about on the way here. If you're going to watch a game and bet and do it normally, that's all well and good. Yeah. You can't go to a casino every day. No. Play no, slots, you play slots, bobble That was my thing, too. That's kind of why i did it because i'm working in in delaware county to get home i pass live no, every yeah. single night <laughs> you think we feel we live down the street i know yeah literally no good. i can walk a lot like it's right there yeah. right you know no, what i mean i couldn't do that yeah i couldn't do that but there was one thing i wanted to catch in the in the beginning um i know you said you went to newman i went to newman Grady, yeah did you ever go to college no i went to college for I guess you could say I did go to college. I enrolled my mom enrolled me in college. Okay. I had no interest to go. Like my mom wanted me to go to school. My dad I'm not saying he didn't want me to go, but it wasn't that big of a deal. Like yeah. he wanted me to work. I was it. working at the saloon at the time. I had a good job. Okay. I left yeah. I had a job first at Dad Stuffings, then I went to the saloon, then I went to Stogie Joe's. Okay. But when I was at the saloon was when I was supposed to go to college. And the first day I went to college, being a girl I grew up with Victoria Gregorio, one of my best friends still to this day, we still talk. Yeah. We go to college one day. They give us a check 
then say, go down the street and get your books. You got to pay with this stipend yeah, check. Yeah. Yeah. And look at the check. It's like 11 on hours. I get right on the phone. Check cash him, please. You cash this check for me. He's like, yeah, I'll cash that check. Right. No problem, Victoria. Get in the car. We get in the car. I go cash the check. We went to the mall. Never went back to college. One wow. day. Wow. One day. It was like one or two days. That was it. Yeah. And they push college on kids. We, we yeah, talk about very college a lot. Like I went to one semester. I got kicked out. Yeah. Because my, my reason why I got kicked out is the, the first day I went in to math class, they said, we're going to do math vocabulary for the first month. Yeah. Come back the first of next month, and we're going to do a test. Well, I didn't go to class for the whole month because yeah. I'm like, I'll study the vocabulary of yeah, outside yeah. of there. And there was one other class I just didn't go to because I didn't like it. They called me into the dean's office. They say, hey, you know, you haven't been in class in a month. I had to, I was, my parents were paying my tuition in four payments. So they told me, you have to pay all four payments by Friday or you can't come back See to school. Later. I went back. My dad Adios. said, well, you're getting <laughs> a full-time you're done. job or you're going in the military. Yeah. Listen, <laughs> I got to be honest with you. When these kids come out of college now, it's like they're, they're making like 40000 a year. They owe 200000 yep. It's pointless. Every and normal. that's the thing is like 40000 is a starting position anyway. Yeah. yeah. Like, I know people don't want to hear this, but you can make more money on social media and on your phone than you could ever make getting out of college and getting a serious job. I've been telling them. Yep. I've been you telling can. them. And the thing is now, like, what people got to understand in college, which they, I don't think they do, is like you said, like you get – you get out, you still get in a starting position, forty thousand yeah, dollars yep. or whatever it is, and they're thinking they went to college, they should get out and make eighty, ninety, a hundred thousand dollars, and it's like it you still happen. you still got to build your resume at that job. You're yeah, better off just yeah. getting the job. Now, if you're a doctor or whatever, yeah, you know, yeah, things yeah. like that. Or but, or but you're going like for that. for business or something. Yeah, I didn't, like, never had any interest in going to college. I, I didn't really care about school. I got to be honest with you. High school was the best. Oh, high I had perfect attendance. Yeah. Freshman to senior year because it, it was a nightclub. Yeah. It was we literally fun. between the girls and my group of friends. It was fun every day. We had a good time. You guys were like the popular kids in school, yeah. you'd say? I mean, I don't want to say it, but I mean. They'll, <laughs> Ask around? Yeah, they'll tell you that. Ask around. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> you know, I didn't have a girlfriend all through high school, so I, you know, oh, so I had a bull. killing them. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. It, it was a good time. That's awesome. So the, the big question that I've asked a couple people, uh, you know, what they want us to ask you. So how do you get your spot on the Skinny Podcast? Well... So I because it's big, it's huge. Yeah, it's so huge. well, first off, let me start off by saying that it, it really is an honor to get that position for the people that are involved to trust me enough to have that spot. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I would say between like Wags really put me in the position to get it, and it was it was a weird situation. They came to Joey and said, you know, we want to do a podcast or whatever, and Joey said no, like no, I'm not doing it. And then it got thrown around again, and then we're up the club one day and. Wags coat and we're you know we're all talking, yeah. and Wags turns around and he's like they want Joey to have a sidekick and and then everybody turns around and looks at each other and they're like snuff, like it was just an easy thing. So I'm in work one day. I never thought anything of it. Wags is calling me and I'm I'm, I'm closing a deal on work relentlessly. Call me, call me. He's like answer your phone. So I'm like all right. I'm like something's wrong. Answer yeah. your phone. He's like send me all your content right now. And I'm like how do you even, you didn't even know the word? Yeah. Send me your videos. <laughs> yeah. So I send him the videos. Ten minutes later, Kevin Connolly calls me on the phone from Entourage. Yeah. And I'm like, hello? He's like, yo, it's Kevin. I'm like, hey, what's up, pal? He's like, eh, you're the guy. And I'm like, for what? He's like, we're doing a podcast and you're the guy. You're you're the you're you're the host of the show. Yeah. You know, co-host, whatever you want to call yeah. it. And I was just like, all right. And I got on the phone with Joey and we just did, Joey's like, what's your ideas? He told me his ideas. I told him mine. Wags, whoever else was involved, and and it, we ran with it from there. Yeah. Just no, like that. That's awesome. Yeah. And uh Kevin Connolly, he was at the uh, the tailgate. He was at the tailgate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got, I got a picture yeah. with him. He, he was, was cool. He's a great guy. Yeah, 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 that was awesome. I mean, he yeah. was. Everybody wanted to take honor. Like, of course, yeah. To take Listen, one of the best him. shows ever made. It yeah. really is. But that's really how it came about. Like they talked about it. Wag said my name. We they agreed with it. I guess. And from that day on, it was just like we're running with it. Now, if Wags never says my name, yeah, there's no Joe Snuff on the podcast. Right. It could be. Peter something yeah, that yeah. nobody knew about. But, yeah. you know, Joey had to feel comfortable that it was me. Yeah. You know, they all had to feel comfortable that it was me. And it was just like, yeah, that was the right decision. And we ran with it from there. And, I mean, I think, I mean, from the outside looking decision. in, yeah, yeah, it was a great no, decision. Right. You know what I mean? Like, you're nobody, definitely holding your weight on the and podcast. I didn't, I didn't tell nobody that there was a podcast. Like, I told my wife. Yeah. I went home and I told her, like, I think this is going to happen, but I don't know if it's going to happen. Right. And she's like, really? She's like, do it 100%. I'm like, of course. My mom and dad didn't know 
the podcast was coming out until that day when I came home from Florida. And I, I told them I had to go to Florida. Yep. They really didn't ask me anything. My dad somewhat knew because of the rumors like that we were talking. Yeah. And I came home. I said, listen, we just filmed the first episode of the podcast. Wow. And they were like, are you serious? I'm like, yeah. And I told them what it was going to be, how it was going to be. And then after the first episode, when I, wa- I would watch the ticker. I would, me and Joey would Lots sit of there. Views, right? Yeah. Like literally, he we were in a group text, and he's like, "How many?" How, and I would just look at him. I'm like, "Oh my god, four thousand, eight thousand, twenty thousand, yeah. fifty thousand. Yeah. First episode got like one hundred and thirty-seven thousand yep. views. Yep. Yeah, and horrible. I'm saying to myself, "No, I want two hundred. We yeah. got that quick. I we was had one of the views. Yeah, we had twenty thousand <laughs> subscribers like week two. Wow, mm-hmm. that's awesome. So like when you when you got picked for that spot. Now, were you thinking like you were – because obviously, as you said, you're not at your job anymore. Yeah. Was that a thought then or were you like, I'm well, just going to go into this and see what happens? No, it was I know if he's going to do this that he's going to put 100 percent effort into right. it. Yeah. So I, I want to put my 100 percent effort into it too. Yeah. So it was the podcast. Listen, the podcast came first. I did have a job yeah. and I still did my job, but my focus was more into that. Yeah, you, you know knew what I mean? you, you knew That's what you wanted what I to do. do. I love social media content. I love being on camera, you know, and I knew that me and him were going to have something good together. You've seen the bloopers, like the first episode. I was nervous. He was nervous. Yeah. Like, right. I never did well, something like this. I'm yeah, still we... nervous. <laughs> <laughs> but it's easy once you get into a good yeah, conversation. Yeah, you're fine. Once you start yeah. flowing. Yeah. It starts getting a little but easier. But we were sitting next to each other the first episode, and I'm sweating. He's sweating, like because you don't know. Like I don't know what we're going to talk about. Yeah, I, yeah. Just, I wrote a script. They gave us what to say or whatever. But it was like it was new. Yeah, right. he never did something like that ever in his life, yeah. and I never did anything like that. I mean, I did the commercials, but I didn't do a podcast. Yeah. So, you know, it was kind of different. That's for me. how, like, with me and him, when we we started, I mean, it was just we're having a conversation. Like, like yeah. he's always been a talker. I've always yeah. been a talker. Yeah. Like, it's the it's the perfect I love, setup. I love being on camera. I'll, I'll talk in front yeah, of, of the camera. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. If you're comfortable, you could do anything. Yeah. That's it. And you're not about like I'm not embarrassed to do anything. No. I'll, I'll go on camera, yeah. whatever we have to do, yeah. you know. And it just it just became like a good mix, and we ran with it. Yeah. No, that's awesome. So with with the podcast. Obviously, the the views are crazy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I see the people taking pictures with you. I see you in the box at the football games yeah. in the back of the Rolls well, Royce. Like Rolls. how yeah. have things like that's yeah, how like, have things well, changed since the podcast started? Well, I would say it changed in the fact that everywhere I go, somebody wants to take a picture with me. Yeah, yeah. if I'm not. If I'm with Joey or without Joey, that you know they want to take a picture, yeah. you know, and then I'm with and, and and if I'm with Joey, it's times a hundred. Yeah, right, literally right. everybody that sees him wants to take a picture with him. Yeah, and it, it's great. It really is. But it changed to the fact that like anywhere I go, they talk about the podcast, and which I love it. They want to take a picture. It's awesome, you know. But I'm getting put into situations now because of Joey that are opening up more opportunities for me and for him, of course. Yeah, you know, I'm in the back of a Rolls Royce. I'm texting Danielle. I'm like, I don't even want to sit in here. I'm so nervous. <laughs> I see. Like, you know I, sent, I, mean? I sent the video to like, him on Instagram. I was like, like Yo, look at yeah, this. Like yeah. Joey took me to the Miami Dolphins game. Yep. Like, there's things. You know, I'm sitting in a box. You know, there's celebrities in there. I'm not going right. to mention who was there, but like, it's an experience that I. I would have never had it if it wasn't for him. Yeah. You right. know what I mean? And the guys that put me in that situation. That's like, awesome. I always give the credit to everybody else. Like, you just put me in the situation. I ain't going to let you down. You know, and we're just going to rock with it. Right. Yeah. But that's the most different situation of it all. Like, it's kind of weird seeing people. You know, I went to a meeting today in Pillsboro, PA. Is yeah. that PA, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. sounds right. Pills, I had yeah. to take 15 pictures. I didn't even think these people wow. knew about the podcast. Right. Yeah. You know uh, what I mean? You're out in PA. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm yeah. out. One guy noticed who I was, then two and girls, and then yeah. three more guys. You know, just roll with it. And it, and I have to say, from the day we started, it was all positive. People like feedback. Yeah. Awesome. You know, when the first episode came out, people were like a little weird at first. Like, what's this going to be? Right. And now you're talking about 19 episodes later, we're still here. Yep. We're number one podcast in that genre by far. For sure. Yeah. You know what Absolutely. I mean? It's, it's yeah. not even close. Everybody else in the genre is yeah. talking about your of podcast. Course. So yeah. <laughs> it's the truth, yeah. you know, and it's because, listen, Joey's a man's man. There's not, you're yeah. not going to meet anybody like him. Right. So I knew that if he was going to do it, like I said, hundred percent, I was going to do a hundred percent. That's awesome. And, and I mean, I see, like I said, obviously you're taking the pictures with these people. Like you're not yeah. scared of the no, people. And no, all that I stuff. love it. The merchandise. We were at a fight this weekend down in Atlantic yeah. city. I yeah. think I seen three, four. Yeah. Five. I was, I was pointing at them too. I'm yeah. pointing yeah. at them. I'm yeah. giving them a thumbs yeah, up listen. with the, the merchandise is going crazy, you I'm know, sure. The merchandise is crazy. And, of course, there's a link in all our bios, yep. you know, manatees.com. You'll see it in there. We got mugs. We got hats. We got T-shirts. We got autograph, 8 by 10 photos of yep. Joey. It's only awesome. 120 made. You know, I think there's only like eight left. Wow. So, 
you know, we got mugs with him it's and flying Trump off on the there. shelf. Yeah, yeah it's good. Flying. We got a cartoon shirt, which our logo. We got stickers. We got keychain. We got everything. Yeah. So we, we wanted to do it the right way. Right. And you, you know, did. I mean, like, yeah. like I said, we're seeing it's people everywhere. Right like you were yeah. on what Pillsbury or whatever yeah. that is. We were down in yeah. Atlantic City. It's, Somebody it's sent me a picture the other day. A guy got married in Jamaica and he had Joey's shirt on. Wow. Yeah. At the, the after party, he had the shirt on him smoking a cigarette. That's wow. awesome. Me. It was pretty cool. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. So the relationship, obviously, with, with you and Joey has has grown. Yeah. Um, I see, obviously, we see you guys together a lot. Was there a relationship before the podcast or of was course. this all new? No, like, I was always young. But I always hung around. Okay. So it was always like my father was friends with Joey. My yeah. grandfather was friends with Joey okay. and his family. My, my uncle Ralphie. Like, so I was always there. You know, little snuff. Yeah. My yeah. dad's snuff. Yeah. Little snuff. Little snuff's here. Little snuff go get us lunch or little snuff's coming over to watch the game. So I never felt awkward. Yeah. You know, right. when he came out of jail in, two th- you know, in the 2000s, I actually went to Florida with his godson to go see him. Wow. So I always had that connection with him. And yeah. then, like I right. said... I went to rehab. They dropped me off to him. He's the yeah. one who got me into the place down there. Made sure I was comfortable. Made, okay. you know, made sure I ate before I went. Yeah. Right. And then in the last, like, I would say three years, you know, with the sports and everything, like, when he would come up, we would all be around breaking bulls and hanging out. We were close, but not as close as we are now, of course. Right. Yeah. And then as the podcast grew, now it's just like... We have that bond, like, you know, yeah. like father and son. I can see you guys, yeah. like, you know it, what I mean? it flows, like... Yeah. Super well yeah. on the yeah. podcast. He screams at me. We break balls, you know, like shit like that. It's just yeah. great. And you guys are doing podcasts like everywhere. It seems everywhere. like yeah. So, like I see you guys down in Florida. I see you guys obviously at the Italian oh, market. We like, try and do places that, of course, we like and people that want us there to do right. it. You know yeah. what I mean? And we always want to help a business if they're struggling or anything. Yeah. So we'll yeah. go to them kind of places if they want us there. We go to Saloon. It is our favorite restaurant. You know, Man, I've so. never been there. The best. I hear it's the best. Philadelphia? The best Sam restaurant Fitzwater. down there. That's what everybody keeps telling it's me. Not a, it's it's unbelievable. It's a great place to go. It's better than where you, when you went earlier, right? I will never go back there. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to say it on camera, because, yeah, yeah, yeah. but right, the Saloon right. from the owner is named Richie. Okay. One of the best people in the world, Zarina. She's, she's like a boss slash host. Yeah. From the waitresses to Johnny Cardulo, like everybody in there makes you feel like family. That's You'll awesome. You'll never feel yeah. out of place. The waitresses are unbelievable. All the waitresses are good looking. So if you're single and you're listening, you want to go there. Yeah. So, but it's, it's just a good time. It really is. It makes yeah, you feel like down. it's my neighborhood. You know, right. from two blocks away. Down there yeah. For, yeah. for sure. You'll yeah. enjoy it. So obviously you got a lot of big things coming up on the podcast. Yes. I don't know how much of it you can talk about, but what's the future look like for the podcast? Obviously so, you're not stopping now. No, no. never. Every this week. Will never Thursday, stop. Thursdays every yeah. week. Right? Thursday, 1 p.m. We're on Patreon now. Yep, because Patreon. Situation that happened with YouTube. Yep. We are posting like a five minute clip on YouTube. You know, you could check out all our socials. You're always going to see a clip. Like I was telling you, four yeah. clips a day. Yeah. And uh, Patreon's, you know, our biggest thing now. We're going to do a live show on Friday, question and answering. That's awesome. We're going to do that once a month, but we have a lot of guests lined up. I can't say who they are. Yeah, right. But a lot of athletes, a lot of retired athletes, a lot of guys that were involved in crime, some lawyers. That's awesome. Right. You know, so we, we got a lot of stuff coming up. So there's That's there's awesome. no stopping for you guys. Every Thursday, one Every PM. Thursday, one o'clock. Awesome. Football season's coming to an end. We're going to go right into NBA, NHL, March You're big Madness. in NHL, too, right? You're love, a big hockey I, fan? I love the Flyers. Me, too. Yeah, that's got, that's my number one. I got my son a, a Flyers jersey. We take yeah. him. We get him on the on the big screen and yeah, stuff. It's I'm, awesome. That's that's probably my number one. That is my number one team in the, in the city. Yeah. It goes Flyers, Phillies. With sports, obviously, this goes back to the very beginning of the podcast. Did you play sports when yeah, you were growing hockey. up? Hockey. I played hockey at Rizzo Rink, and then I played hockey up until my sophomore year at New Gretty. Awesome. Okay. My, yeah. uh, my mother-in-law just said the other day that she'll buy uh, my son all of his hockey equipment. She just wants him to play hockey. Well, I'm like, expensive. No, whatever no. you're you paying for, ice hockey. Ice hockey. I'm in. Okay. I yeah. played ice hockey yeah. for a couple of years when the I was best. younger. It's, yeah. it's a fun sport. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. You'd be scary on ice skates. Oh, dude, I was yeah. the biggest person on the ring. You're yeah. the biggest person <laughs> yeah. wherever we go. I know. I mean, <laughs> hockey's just fun. It's a good time. Like I don't. We just had AJ Galanti on the podcast two podcasts ago. He yeah, owned, I've seen that. You know, the, the, the Trashers hockey team, which was an unbelievable story. So we're going to have – actually, we're going to try and do a league yeah. in South Philly. It's okay. going to be a roller hockey league. It's, he's going to have a team. Me and Joey will have a team. And then at the end, we're going to call it the Sauce, sauce. and Gravy yeah, Tournament. Yeah, I've seen that. Okay. Yeah, you got to pick right. me up on yeah. your team. Yeah. 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 We're going to do something special. Too. Yeah. 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 It, I'm it's going to be – so I'm just fun, you know. Yeah. yeah. Maybe, well, he's from Dan Barry. Me and Joey are actually going to do his podcast, I think, in a couple of weeks. Awesome. So he's got he's got his thing going on. But he, he became a good friend of ours from – from social media. Yeah. We started yeah. talking and we, we, we talk every day. That's that's, that's awesome. awesome. So yeah. that's the, the future of that podcast there. What's the future for Little Snuff look like? Um, I would say hopefully, 
me and Joey take this thing to the next level. And everybody that supported us, it. yeah, I would love everybody that supported it. us, yep. and everybody that's been with us since the start of this, everybody's going to hopefully have a good future. You yeah. know, I love it life. when I see you guys out. Like I said, the tailgate, yeah. obviously yeah. the parade. Like out. it's always a good time. Yeah. It's always a good time. Listen, and you got to realize Joey's been doing stuff like this, giving back to the community since like the eighties. Yeah. yeah, like I mean, yeah. we did a podcast. We had that fundraiser two weeks. Hundred thousand. Yeah, no one. Awesome. Celebrities sometimes can't even do that. Like, right. like the Kardashians of this world. So what he does, he's been doing forever. He gave back to the veterans. Yep. SPCA, breast cancer. The, uh, we gave to prison reform. Families that are home, that, that their kids are home because their parents are in jail. Yeah. Can't have Christmas. Wow. So we right. gave the money to their grandparents or aunts or uncles. Make sure they had Christmas. Then yeah. we had a, a giveaway. I like turkey drive. We gave away 500 turkeys. Yeah. Bikes, coats, hats. I saw 100 that, families, yeah. and they got a, a full course meal. So that's, that's the thing. How can, anybody, stuff. Like, awesome, how can anybody talk down on you can't. the podcast you on can't. him? Yeah, like, but but you you know, you're always going to have the jealous people yeah. out there, and we understand that. I, listen, I don't. I don't care about the comments. Yeah. I, I read them Keep sometimes. Yeah. Dude, the more negative comments, I don't know if they realize okay. this. It gets us in the algorithm even more. So we're just going to yeah. get more views. Yeah. So I, I, it don't matter to me. We I, I get threats. People send you sure. stuff. You know, but the major, I'm going to say 85% of it, it's always positive. That's awesome. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. awesome. Anything yeah. you guys do, like All giving positive. back to the community, yeah. I'll, we'll love to help with anything. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Listen, we'll help with anything. Awesome. Yeah. We're, we're, we're going to have a lot of stuff. Um, that's coming in the future. I don't know exactly what it could be or what I could say, but you're going to see a lot of things that are going to grow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I said, we're, we're going to get in the golf, too. I don't know if I mentioned that. That's awesome. We're yeah. going to the PGA Tour. I seen you. So, I seen the swing yeah. the other day. Yeah, yeah we like a golf one. and we had yeah. the oh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool. a good one. Yeah, and of course, I, a par three, I hit it five feet from the pin. It's the only time we didn't record. Wow. I swear to God. <laughs> wow. Joey, you, screaming was at me. A, you were rushing. You was were it rushing. a one putt? Yo, yeah, I oh, missed okay. it. Okay. I did miss it for birdie, but I, I parred the hole. Oh, there you go. I'm not a golf player, but I hit a golf ball a couple of times. I mean, top golf, that's my place. Yeah, I'm yeah, sure he it hits is. it out of the building. Out he doesn't even golf the club. Listen, golf is one of the best sports to it play. Is. I swear, it's, it's a good just time. fun Relaxing, to go out. Time, like, listen, like, you guys drink, you smoke cigars. Clearly, yeah. Yeah. that's the best time to go out there and do it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So one thing that we do on the podcast, which we'll we'll end the podcast with this, uh, but every episode we have a quote. Okay. Um. So I click the quote. I put it up. I get. Obviously, your opinion sure. on it. I think it's a good one for you. Okay. Um. So the saying that money can't buy happiness. What do you think about that? Well, it sure can fucking help. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that, yeah. I'm going to be honest with you. Listen, that the quote, of course, money can't buy happiness, but it can make you be happy. Yeah. Right. So for sure. I understand that everybody money's not everything. I'm not saying that it's everything, but when you don't have money, you stress. You can't oh, pay your yeah. bills, right? Everything's when hard. When you can't take your girl or your son to a hockey game or something. Because you need money, right? Exactly. Right. You can work as hard as you want in this world. With the prices that things are, you need extra money. You, need money. you do. For sure. So it makes you feel more comfortable. Me, personally, I hate money. I don't care about money. I never did. If I got 10000 on me tomorrow, tomorrow I might have $11. Yeah. I might have 10000 on the far away. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's just how I am. Right, right. It, money doesn't control my life. It never did. Yeah. But you definitely need money to be happy and somewhat of this world. Yeah. You do. Absolutely. No, I, I, Bill, I you know, you're, you're a million after, percent. You know, and my wife said to me all the time, you you just hate money. It's not that I hate it. It's just, it don't control me. I'll figure yeah. it out. Yeah. Right. I yeah. always was that way. I'll figure it out. That's it. I, I totally agree. So the, the Skinny Podcast... Every Thursday, 1 p.m. on Patreon. Patreon. Yes, the big, big, big Patreon. And don't forget, everybody that's listening, I want you to go hit the subscribe button yep. to Growing Pains. Please do that for me. Make sure you like, subscribe, follow, share. Do anything you possibly can to get these guys a ton of views. I appreciate you for having me. I appreciate Thank you, man. Yeah, it's been no. great. And we're going to keep reposting everything that, that you're doing. We'll hopefully, collab on everything. Hopefully, yes. we see you around. We get down to, to doing some donations and, and yeah, things like that yeah. with you guys. Like I said, there's going to be a lot more things that come. The link's in my bio for Patreon, Joey's bio. Yep. Also, it's on you know YouTube, Spotify, Apple. We're everywhere. Merchandise is live. Hats, mugs, Where's the merchandise at? Again? Manatees.com. You'll see it in my awesome. bio. Okay. My, yeah, and we'll put all this in the YouTube, yeah, too, yeah, so they'll be yeah, able yeah. to go see everything. But. Yeah. But no, it's big time, man. I appreciate yeah, it. You're you. killing I it. Guys we're gonna, me. we're gonna right. stay tuned in. But Absolutely. thank you, man. Thank Let's you, sir. My man, thank you. What's going on, everybody? This is Jordan and Big Z with the Grown Pains Podcast. And I just want to give a big shout out to the Skinny with Joey Merlino live on Patreon, fifteen dollars a month. If you don't have that, you shouldn't even be watching this.